few things that are constants in life. We all have to pay taxes. We all have to die. And at some point, we all get frustrated with OCR because it just doesn't work very well. Here are some top results from a Google search I made today. Has GPT-4 always been bad at OCR? So GPT-4 isn't good at OCR. Here's a complaint from an Adobe forum. Adobe doesn't do it right. Here are complaints from open source locations. Open source models don't seem to work. It's not the only reason, but one common reason people get frustrated with the quality of OCR is that they have forgotten to pre-process the images they shove into the model. So today I'm gonna to show you a little app that I built that helps illustrate the effect of applying some very common pre-processing steps to images before passing them to an OCR model and lets you quickly see the effect of how when you don't apply those pre-processing steps, how that massively affects the quality of the output of OCR, regardless of what kind of model you're using. So here's the app, let me get you oriented to it. When you start up the app, you can either drag and drop an image or use your browser here to pick an image that you wanna play around with. At the top, you'll see an array of controls here. Each of these helps you basically control a common OCR pre-processing step. So the check boxes at the top allow you to turn on and off one of four very common pre-processing steps for OCR. The first is normalization. That just takes the pixel intensity values of an image and bookends them to specific preset values. Common presets are like between zero and 255 or zero and one. So that step shoves all the pixel intensity values and makes them live within that range. The next checkbox is denoising, which kind of speaks for itself. It removes noise like speckles and things like that from an image. You can turn it on and off just like the previous one by checking and unchecking the checkbox. Third is de-skewing. De-skewing means to take an image that might be rotated and orient it horizontally. This is super important for, for most OCR models. Finally is thresholding. Thresholding is commonly the last step you applied on pre-processing. That just basically binarizes your image. You take a value in the range of the two bookends that you, that you created with normalization. You pick a, a value in between. Everything above that value I'll set to say 255 or the high end of your bookend. And everything below it I'll set to zero. So you, you output a binary image. It makes the image, it typically makes the text on the image easier to see. Below those controls, you'll see a text box that will output the OCR detected text for whatever image you input. Or again, you can use this default image. The original image used in the app is shown in this middle panel here. You probably can't see anything in this image because I've taken a very simple image. Let me show you what it looks like. It looks like this. It's just a screen grab of some text. And I've taken it and I've massively compressed the contrast so that it looks completely black. I've also rotated it about 45 degrees. So this is the original image. You can see what that image looks like after you normalize that pixel intensity spectrum. So now you can actually see the text on the page. Then you can see the de-skewed, that is the rotated, the, the de-rotated image here in the bottom right. And then you can, finally you can see the thresholded image here in the top. In this upper left image, you can see all of the text detected by the particular OCR model used here. You can see the text itself, the detections in green here, these green boxes, and then the text itself in red above those green detection windows. In this text box above, you can more easily see all that text printed out in a nice scrollable format. And now you can start playing around. So you can start unchecking some of these pre-processing steps to see the result, not only in the final OCR quality, but basically what happens at each successive step of pre-processing. So for example, if we don't de-skew, if I uncheck this, that means that the image won't be properly rotated into a horizontal alignment. And whenever you check or uncheck one of these boxes, everything is reprocessed. So you'll see there's no text detected via the OCR model. The remainder of the steps still function as they should in the sense that the normalization still fixes the color contrast. The thresholding still produces a binary image, but because you didn't rotate the image, to a horizontal orientation, you don't detect any text. Let's turn that back on. When we turn it back on, again, everything is basically reset to normal. All the processing steps are performed as they should. What happens if we don't threshold? Well, again, we see we have no text detected. Why? Because the binarization or the thresholding step in pre-processing really makes that text pop out from the background. And if you don't apply that step and apply it properly, then you just won't detect any text. This little doohickey here allows you to actually choose the thresholding value. So even if we turn thresholding back on, okay, and we get our original results, 
you can see here that thresholding is being applied at the number 200. So everything above 200 is set to one extreme value. Everything below is set to another. This is a good threshold value for this particular input image. But if we mess around with that threshold value by moving this slider around, say shoving it up to 225, if you look at the result, the thresholded image is now pure white or one, one of the two extreme values because the threshold value has been set too high. And consequently, we don't see any text. Now, the OCR model built into this app is the classic Tesseract OCR model. This works on a detection basis. That means that each character in the image is detected individually, and then the results are sewn together using a language model. But the same issue of needing to pre-process your image doesn't just apply to sort of classic detection-based OCR models like Tesseract, but also to more modern transformer models as well. Here's a very popular open source transformer-based OCR model. Now I'm showing you an app that's running that particular transformer OCR model. I've now dragged and dropped the original image that I used for my little toy demo before I messed with the contrast and rotated it. And we'll see that this model does a very good job of detecting all of the text. And we can see the output in this tab. The text has been detected very accurately. But if I feed this model the same kind of input that I showed you before where I took this image, heavily reduced the contrast to make it look basically black and rotate it, we'll see that this model too cannot detect any text, just like Tesseract. So now I've uploaded that same test image, this one here that's baked into the app by default, into this modern transformer OCR model. And we can see in this tab, no text has been detected. So regardless of the kind of OCR model you're using, whether or not it's a classic detection-based model or a modern transformer model, you really need to apply multiple pre-processing steps to your image in order to produce even adequate quality for your OCR output. This is a common misconception people have. They typically blame the OCR model itself, but I hope in showing you how to play around with this app, there are a lot of problems you have to address before the OCR model that can create poor OCR model results. Now, if you wanna play around with this OCR pre-processing app yourself, visit this GitHub repository. There'll be a link in the description. The instructions for installing the app are located in the readme. There are two basic steps. First, pip install the requirements located in the repository. And two, copy and paste this line to your terminal to start up the app. Each of those pre-processing steps is laid out in code. You can find it either in the repository library itself, or if you wanna walk through those steps, check out this CoLab notebook. I have it open here. This notebook walks through each of those pre-processing steps in detail with code, obviously. If you'd like me to create a video where I walk through this notebook and we go through each of those pre-processing steps in detail, just let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to do it. And that's about it. Again, if you want to download it and run this app yourself, see the GitHub link in the description. Have a good day.